Right. Well, who is he watching? <laughs> This is not sponsored. In, this exactly. is not sponsored yet. And now, without further ado, I present the regional manager of Dunder Mifflin Scranton, Michael Scott. Good <sighs> pick. Hey guys, um, John here with a um, special guest today, uh, Christian Padroni. New name, Crispin Spamoni. Crispin Spamoni. Wow, piacere. He's doing a big thing in Stanford. Big thing. Big things. What, we got 10 well, days? I mean, listen, listen, we've been talking about this for a pretty long time, right? Mm -hmm. Parma Palooza, All right? What is Parma Palooza? People may ask. They will, yeah. And people have been because they've been selling tickets like like crazy. Um, and so essentially, Parma Palooza is something that I've been wanting to do for years, where it's a uh, an American Italian uh, food festival, right? So I got to partner up with the uh, awesome team. Uh, parachute concerts over at uh, the Hicks Stanford Food Festival, PJ, sure. uh, the whole gang. And they literally afforded me the opportunity to make it happen, right? So we're doing like the first ever uh, Parma Palooza, you know, American Italian, you know, street fest, food fest. And, you know, it's literally in our area, our world, our little world that we're creating that's Palooza. You got David Greco from Arthur Avenue making Italian combos, legend. right? Yeah. Absolute legend. You got, you got uh, Angelo Mind Machine doing porchetta and fresh mozzarella sandwiches on Rosetta buns. Like, are you, are you kidding me? Yeah. Then Angelo's helping me do a mozzarella bar, which is gonna be great. So it'll be a boot you can come up to and just get beautiful, fresh, warm mozzarella, olive oil, sea salt, maybe some toppings. Um, we're doing a Zeppeli booth. We're doing sausage and peppers. And then what's great is that there's gonna be this one area that's gonna be raised up a little bit. And we're gonna be able to, <laughs> big boy, this is my uh, this is my new agent. Oh, and, oh, oh he's pissed. He is not happy. He is not happy with you, Zach. Come here. Yeah, I know, Don't say I know. Hi. I think it's time. You know what? Maybe get Zach his envelope. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be time. Ah. Thank you for your help, Zach. It's been great. But you see yourself out into the uh -oh. water. Uh -oh. You want to uh -oh. see a trick? This not, what the? <gasps> Is this my shoe sneaker? <laughs> what? Shoe car? Oh. <gasps> Where's your car? Where's your car? Gosh! Wow! Gets every time. <laughs> Gets them. All right. So, what what is the date for for Palm Blues with them? It's on the twenty first. Rock of the Spiritos coming up. Yeah. I mean, it's gonna be metal. It's gonna be metal. All right, you gotta go. You gotta go. You're out. <laughs> oh, can I have it's some like of nap that? time? Oh. It's nap time. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Love you, Babush. Yeah, so, so Parma Palooza is just gonna be like, just great. Bye. 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 Love you. <laughs> night night. Have, call Briar back. She's been asking. I mean, she keeps calling you, not answering the phone, bro. <laughs> She's starting to get a complex. <laughs> My daughter. Um, Parma Palooza, dude. Essentially, is gonna be this 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 energy of like uh, of food vendors. We got a bunch of local vendors coming in. You know that's important to me. So like for example, I got our guys Bobos yep. coming to do one of these beautiful affogados, right? Yep. Big whipped cream affogado, delicious, wonderful. Um, and it's like we they're part of the sh so it's like they're part of the show, but. I needed local representation 
for coffee. This is Stanford. I'm not coming in here and having, you know. Sure. And Bobo wasn't down for that either. He was like, yeah, like, you know, where's the local guy? Bring him in. So I called Breno over at Winfield. Nice. And I'm like, hey, man, I know you're going to be there anyway. Like, why don't you be a part of Palmer Palooza? It's on August 21st. You know people are going to want iced coffees. Let's collab on iced coffee. So that's, you know, and then we got a bunch of local businesses, local food trucks. Everyone's going to be there. But the hub is this Parma Palooza, and there's going to be this um, this raised uh, kitchen, essentially, in the middle of this thing, where Rocco de Spirito will come up and do a demo, and then, you know, we'll all hang out, and we'll bring people up, and we'll have different cooking things, and we'll be giving stuff away. Um, you know, I'm going to be doing a, a wet t-shirt contest. I'm the only person who's going to be in it. Um, I think that's going to be before we even open. We should do a calendar. We should do a calendar. Just like me, you, some other fat guys. Get them all together. I think we sell a lot. I think we do well. Husky. Husky. So you know, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, we used to go, we used to, go to Macy's. I remember yeah. Macy's. I'm thinking either it had to be either Johnny Wanamaker in Cross County or Macy's in, in White Plains. But I was a little kid and we go shopping for back to school. Back to school, you know? Oh, yeah. And we would go and the, the clothes I wanted, I, I could never be in that section because we always had to go to the Husky. We used to have sections called Husky section. And I go, Mom, yeah. what's a, isn't a Husky a dog? And they go, no, no, mama, you husky, you husky, you big bone, mama, you husky, you gotta shop in this section with the other husky boys. So, um, how do we even get to that? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> our calendar, our calendar. Husky, husky We get men. storage to do it. We get some other, what? <laughs> Matt, I'm sorry. You're not offended. Um, no, Matt's a super model. <laughs> so, you... So, you played baseball... And you were actually very good at baseball when you were a kid. Do you do you wish like you were still doing that? You make you've been, you've been, you've been much you'd be much richer. I'd be so rich, bro. I'll tell you, it John is bringing up something that is a little bit of a sensitive subject in my life. Um yes. I thought I wasn't gonna go to that. So well no, but when I no, You were actually a good baseball player. <laughs> You were like, they called you Baby Ruth. <laughs> so, I was a catcher. And I swear. <laughs> Say that Dude. again. I was, a, I was a catcher. I was a catcher. I got these Girardi, like, thighs, like a stallion, right. you right. know? I can pop up and throw a frozen rope to second base and, and pick you right off, bro. Right. You wouldn't even know yeah. what the fuck happened. Well, Curses? Yeah. And uh, so it was interesting. We used to play Little League at um, McLean, on McLean Avenue, um, McLean Heights, you know, in, in Yonkers. And uh, we played Little League for years. And literally, dude, I, I loved it. And I, I, I would always get out of the park. Like, it was hilarious. Like, this husky dude <laughs> was just like, boom, ringer, boom. Oh, look who it is. It's Carl. Carl. Carl, what's up? Hey, what's up to Carl? Say what's up to Carl. Hey, Carl. Hey, Wiz. Carl. Carl, remember when you said, what was that song you sang in front of Fortino Armand? With the pizzas? <laughs> yeah, would you mind giving a little rendition to our audience? We're, out, we're live right now. Was this alive? No. That'd be cool. But we're, we're alive. Carl, you ready? Are you at my house? Yes, sir. Where's my wife? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll call you back. Just, yo, uh, uh, hitch up the oven. I'm, I, I'm going to ask Jack if we can park in here for the next week. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks we're joking. <laughs> you can park here. Thank you. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'll get you an address. <laughs> that that bleep it, bleep it, bleep it. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll text uh, it to you. Bye. Uh, <laughs> right. Sorry. Oh. No, so you'd be editing this. It'd be hilarious. It was just like, <laughs> beep over my whole thing. <laughs>
Come on, let me know. I help you get that done. If you need, if you need some censorship help. So Carl went on the ram. <laughs> Carl disappeared. <laughs> Carl disappeared for about three or four years. It's like I heard crazy stories. Carl is like he's literally like a brother to me. He makes he makes us crazy. He makes Zach especially crazy, which is my favorite <laughs> thing to watch. <laughs> but I'm so I'm so grateful to have Carl back in my life. He's vital to Gabagool Media. He's literally at my house where my <laughs> five ton pizza oven's been parked on the curb in front of my mother in law's house for the past week. And I'm like, just get it out of here. And I pull up and I'm like, hey, Zach, Dom got a nice little notch out over here in front of his house. <laughs> it's a perfect spot for an oven. Yeah, we got enough room for you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Carl's back in. He helps. He's a big help to me. Um, you know, getting the oven around, setting up our mobile events. We've been doing like some bespoke events. Uh, what was the word we were using for the other the new events we're going to be doing? The word yes, they know those events, those new dinners. Those exactly, what's the word? We we said bespoke. Bespoke was the no, word. No, there's a word for that. Are you guys getting oh. involved with eats? Oh, alternative. Oh, alternative. Oh, alternative. Alternative. Well, alternative. We do events. some private, um, you know, alternative dinners. Alternative dinners. Yeah, I got like it. you know, um, the food is just really you know, <laughs> special. I you know what I mean. I like that for you. Yeah, so that's a good thing, and it's and it's all. It's all private. It, it's it's nice because we get to just if I'm not traveling, I get to be here with the family, and I get to pick the few events, the few things that you know, a uh, few little things that I'd like to do while I'm here. Sure. And it's I I feel like you know as much as I I love the restaurant business and I truly miss it, it has afforded me the opportunity to be able to flex a little bit and try some new stuff and and. Um, I feel very lucky for that, buddy. I feel Good. very fortunate. You should. You should. Controversial question. Hit me. Best Italian restaurant in Stanford. Oh, it's gotta be. Um, it's gotta be. It's listen. Mm, I, it's it's tough for me between, um, Silvium and Villa Roma. Villa Roma. I put Columbus Park in there too. <sighs> I haven't been there long enough. Um, I, you know, we should go yeah. do a lunch there. Yeah. Um, the Villa the Villa Roma folks. They where like, is Villa Roma? Dude, I, I didn't even know. We were, I was like, where are we? Like, is this Serpo? <laughs> right? right. Yeah, I was like, are we on another planet? It's like in the nook of Stanford, like when you're going towards like Greenwich, yep. like somewhere in that area. There's that cool, uh, in the area, there's a hotel and then like there's that, that Ethiopian restaurant with the Tell. cool. Yeah, it looks cool, very cool. Um, mm -hmm. It's in that area, but their patient, like the food's banging. I went there with some friends, I went there with the Franks. And we had a great a great lunch, but then like dessert came out, and like this cat flexing hard, like he was just they're just making every day they're just making beautiful tiramisu, beautiful desserts, Napoleons like like scratch made, and so special, so delicious. They're the sweetest people. And you got Silvium, right? That's. Uh, 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 generational run by two fathers and two sons. I mean, what uh, amazing! What other like what like I'm a, like the hair stand up on the back of my head because I look at my son Bo and I'm like, you know what? What are you up to? What are you gonna do? Right? right. And like the past few nights, our thing is, you know, we sneak, you know, he, uh, we 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 pretend that your mom knows what's going on, but we <laughs> pretend that we um we're, we're going to take him to bed, but me and him go and we watch. Unwrapped with Mark Summers and watch him make candy. Right, and he's been falling asleep on the couch. And I'm been, so he's been enjoying watching food. He loves cooking with me. I know he's a little kid, but like he, like he's he's seems to be gravitating towards that kind of stuff. Like he literally wants to make pancakes or waffles or something like every day. He likes cracking the eggs. He, he you know, so it's like, what what's gonna? You see people like Sylvium. And you're like, man, what's, you know, I would love, my God, if my kids wanted to just, you know, sure. carry on yeah. something that's legendary. So those two are probably um, for sure in my top two of best Italian restaurants yeah. um, in Stanford, in my opinion. That's easy. With your work, but, there, but listen, there's other great places. <clears throat> There's really not great places. <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of that too. Yeah. So, question. One, one specific. We've got. <laughs> yeah, there is one. Sorry. 
There is one. No, no, no. Keep going. Particularly what you're saying? bad. Not what you're saying. It used no, to no, be. No, no. Yeah, uh, we're just talking about so, something. So, we're a big Sugar Rush family, by the way. That's a good one for the kids on Netflix. Sugar Rush is good. Oh wait, is Sugar Rush like factories? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, when you were a kid. And you were watching like Mr. Rogers or you were watching like you were on PBS and like you happened to stumble upon them in a crayon factory or a pencil factory. Those were my, I don't know if it was like, if, like it had to be for a lot of kids. Like that was like, oh my, you feel like you hit the lotto. It's like when you were a kid in the car and the radio was on and like it's a crab shoot and then boom, your favorite John Cicada song comes on and you're like right. super excited. Yeah. John Cicada for me, just another day without you. Right. You know, that yeah, was like yeah. when I was a little kid, a couple times it popped on the radio, and I just remember like it was like my dad would keep driving around the block so I could finish the song. That That is something I That's miss. It's like you, you kind of like lose that, and kids lose that too. It's like same thing with like Blockbuster Video. Like oh. that was an event. That was something you went and you like you saw that made a whole fucking day of it. What? You saw no. that documentary? No. Oh, Bob, there's a great documentary, The Last Blockbuster Standing, or The Last Blockbuster right. in the World, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's, oh, the, they talk about, think about the smell of Blockbuster. Yeah. The smell of that plastic, and they were printing, always printing, and you can smell the printer, but then sometimes it was popcorn and, and those fluorescent lights in that carpet. And you hold that thing maybe in your you hand. get maybe you get a box of candy depending on if dad was in the right mood or not. But like you, and also it wasn't guaranteed that you were gonna get the video you wanted, and then you'd have to go home. There's a whole ritual. Pump for it, yeah. And now you just pop it on. There's no appreciate. There's no ritual to it. We never got to get the candy. We were more of a we had candy at home family. <laughs> and then you go home, and the candy at home would be like those strawberries wrapped with the foil candy. You know what I'm talking about? Italian like grandma candy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like jelly inside. I want to come back to that because you have a very funny story about birthday cakes. But first, before I, I got I to gotta ask you this. You're doing Gabagool Media. Yeah. You're selling a lot of really cool merch. Uh, did God, you bring, save me. Did you bring me a lighter? I have one in my sneaker. Yeah. Do you have a lighter? Because no. we actually don't have a lighter right now. It's, it's one of these weird it's blocks we have. We yeah, I got, I got a Drake, a Drake uh, hidden hidden uh, cookie right. lighter in the car for you. So we got Gabagool Media. Pancake Poppy. We got food festivals now. Yeah. You're obviously doing a lot of work for Food Network. But a lot of people, I myself included, would like to know, are you ever going to get back in the restaurant game? Man, I am so scarred from the restaurant game as you just you're probably just more resilient than me i think <laughs> no i've just been healing a little bit longer but yeah, yeah yeah there was also um, a, a strong strong desperation that fueled our fire well yeah no listen that's true and you know we got you know like it's fight or flight right when you when you're uh surviving for your family and trying to put a roof over sure. your head so you, we all do what we have to do so i feel so fortunate every day for Food Network, Guy Fieri, Discovery Plus. Like, are you kidding me? Like, I've been able to to sort of focus on this new multimedia world. Had I not had that, I don't even know. I'd be strong enough to like eat, to like to eat, even do what you guys did. Maybe maybe I you know like I said, fight or flight. You do what you got what you got to do. But I don't know, man. I don't know what I'd be doing if if it wasn't for Guy and if it wasn't for for uh, Food Network and my television career. Obviously, my wife. But like you know. But like I guess for for me, it's <clears throat> it's just and I'm taking small breaks in restaurant, being out of the business, going back into it. And there's always, there's, there's something that all of us share where it's the addiction piece of the That's restaurant it. business. And it's really just, you come out to a table, someone looks at you and you go, oh my God, that's the best fucking thing I've ever eaten. And you, the endorphins and whatever the fuck is going on in your brain just start firing off like crazy. Yeah. And you become addicted to that. How hard is it? Not to get to do that on a, on not necessarily a daily basis, but even just to scratch the itch every couple of weeks. If you know well, what you know about me is that my itch was more is lied heavily on the creation and the creativity and the menu. And what was the question again? Just remind me. 
how do you how do you get by not scratching that it's not having that moment where you drop yes. your pasta off and they go oh my fucking god that was the yeah. best thing I've ever eaten because I I dude I can get emotional because I am so it is not lost on me because I am getting that feeling of gratification at the airport when somebody is so excited that they saw me on Food Network I don't think I, I'm like. You who? You're excited to see me? And some little kids come up to you, dude, and they're excited. It's mostly little kids. It's the best. So, so you're I'm, getting I'm, that same thing. I'm getting it there, but, 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 B-U-T-T-T-T-T-T, but, dude, you're right. We're, we're fucked up in the head. We're sickos. And yeah. so I do need what you're saying, which is like, I do need to design something again like right i do need to build something figure out how to raise the money to do it um like i want to i want to get it built up i want to get it staffed i want to you know i want i want to cook soigne beautiful food right i just you know if i can do it on my terms and i have some ideas which you know about yeah um then I, I, yeah, I'd be, I, I, I would not say that I'm never getting back into the restaurant business. Plus I'm working on like some cool projects. Uh, I don't know. Fucking, it's in, it's in Cali, bro. It's going to be, it, and it's going to be, it's going to be metal. I gotta stop saying that. <laughs> I got you. It's um, going to be metal. So like, so like there's like some <laughs> stuff. There's, you know, there's those sorts of restaurant things that, um, I feel fortunate to hopefully be able to have my, you know, my crack at, which is already seems to be kind of, you know, rotating that direction. So, um, but wherever I land, wherever I live right now, we're, you know, we're in between, you know, homes, you know, like we, I, I needed to make a change, you know, we are where we are right now temporarily. And essentially wherever I end up landing, which will be somewhere in Westchester or Fairfield County, I mean, yeah, and you, you, you told, you, uh, your it's advice. Nice. Yeah, but but your by your advice, I'm definitely gonna pop um, a, a neighborhood restaurant in that's mine yeah. in that town. You know what I mean? And there's one town that I got my eyes on right now. There's a piece of property in one town I got my eyes on, and it will be hilarious. Oh yeah. To. So <laughs> either way, to be to be continued. So but on that. Yeah, on that. Fudgy the Whale. Oh. So Fudgy the Whale cakes were not a thing oh, for me as a kid. And it, in yeah. Texas, it's really not a thing. But when I met you, you started telling me stories about Fudgy the Whale cakes. And I want you to get into your, your trauma. But the, the, funny, the funny thing is, is now I've adopted that for, for our kids. And we don't even Are do you them doing with, that to them? Oh, yeah. Especially with Uber Eats. You Boy. go on there. No, we, he's delivering. We... On the oh, I'm not getting in the. No, I'm not getting. Oh, in the I thought you do. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. Don't do that, then, no, bro. We instead of birthdays, like every now and again, the kids are doing good. Every, we're having a special day, or whatever. We'll just do surprise fudge the well cakes. So it's like the greatest fucking thing you can do for a kid is just be like, surprise. I get a random. I, oh my god, incredible. But but as a child, <laughs> the tail on a fudgy. Your your both your parents are off the boat Italians. Yeah, and at birthdays. You just wanted one thing. What was that? <laughs> fudgy the whale, bro. <laughs> I wanted a fudgy the whale cake so bad. And my father, um, who is the best. So, you know, the I'm, best. I'm going to preface this that if there's anyone that I want in the foxhole with me, it's my father. <laughs> Believe you me, it's him, bro. <laughs> now, now, you know, there's a whole other like, line of questions that we can get into, but go ahead. Yeah, you gouge people's <laughs> eyes out. He's the guy you want in the foxhole with you, bro. Because he's got, he's not, he'll take you out. No problem. He won't even think twice about it. But that's not, so my father's the best, right? Yeah. You know, we, we, we may not have had a whole lot growing up, but my parents got us to Italy every summer. They got us to Disney a few times. Like we went to the Bahamas. So like you, you, know. you grew up in Weston, Connecticut. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, deep in the woods of Weston. So, uh, couple so, acres. 
So like, you know, um, 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 my dad, my dad. So birthdays, like, you know, when you're a kid, you don't know, you don't know. So, you know, your parents pick the cakes for you until, you know, you start to get wise to shit, you know? And then start you start other kids' birthday parties. Other kids' birthday parties. Kids got a, a cookie puss. What's a cookie? What's a cookie puss? Oh my God. Like, it's a cookie puss. It's made on ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> like you're looking over at the cake, all the kids are over playing with like the things. I'm like, I'm just checking out. I'm like, what is this thing? You know, it's thawing on the counter. Right. And then I wanted Fudgy the whale, bro. Like, oh, I must have had it somewhere, dude. That tail piece, that end tail piece of the Fudgy yeah. the whale. But is, now you get the extra crunchies too. You can order those. Yeah. Well, no, I, I just. just <laughs> I'll do that in a second. Yeah. Because I just, as a grown up now and with Uber Eats, discovering that you can order extra crunchies is <laughs> bad, bro. 100%. It's like crunchies, like. This just became, <laughs> it's like, it just became like an amazing Carvel commercial. But. Oh, God, I love the Carvel. So that end piece of the fudge of the whale is just, you know, so you're a kid, you fudge, you want fudge. And uh, my dad, would, you know, was in charge of the cakes and he'd go to like beautiful Artuzos in, um, uh, in Yonkers on McLean Avenue. Not Carvel, right. <laughs> so already Carvel out the door. But all right, our two shows an incredible bakery, incredible family, incredible people. All of our friends grew up working in there, the Canales. I mean, like we love our two shows, right? You know, and where I grew up in the Bronx was right on the border of Yonkers and McLean Avenue, so we were all like intermingled over there, big Irish neighborhood. And uh, yeah, my dad would get these cakes that were like. Fresh Chantilly cream, right? Which is whipped cream. Right. Whipped cream. Kit. All right. All right. So the whipped cream right. based cake. <laughs> Already womp. Right. And then it'd be like white cake, like soaked in like apricot rum <laughs> with like an apricot glaze. And then he'd get like peaches, like peaches and cream. And like, it sounds great in your head, but it's like, you know, it's like a fucking kid right. doesn't want fruit in his cake. Right. <laughs> and so my dad and, and, and like Sherry had to stop me from almost doing this to my kid with Fudgy the Whale. Right. Bo didn't want Fudgy the Whale. Not that he didn't want it, but he wasn't asking for it. There was some other sort of cake um, he was already hot on. I think like white icing and sprinkles or something. Right. But I'm like, dude. I'm like, what if I got you a fudge of the whale? Don't you want fudge of the whale? You want fudge and crunchies? And my wife's like, you know what you're doing right now, right? Don't do it. And I was like, all right, have the cake he wants. Have the cake he wants. <laughs> yeah, you literally became, almost became your father with that one. I should be so lucky. Yeah, you should. Now, that brings up something funny that you got me thinking about pop stories now. Uh, and it's funny as a parent now, thinking about how you grew up and how different things were for you as a kid. And, you know, safety precautions and things like that. So, you know, with kids now, you got all the car seat rules and the weight and all this stuff. <laughs> Your dad used to take you guys in a van, right? And I just wanted, maybe you could go from there. The van. Yeah, there was a Ford Econoline extended cap. Right. Brown. About the color of this coffee. Now, she was a beauty. And I'll tell you a funny story. We were driving up to Wilton, Connecticut. Yep. From the Bronx. My uncle Frank had John's best up there. Yeah, you know, he sure. Was legendary. Um, God rest his soul. He just passed away recently. A legend in Connecticut. And um, you know, my dad's side hustle was um, he would do fruits and vegetables for restaurants. But like, you know, you were a catering hall, and like you had like, you know, a VIP coming in, like the owner of like the local like you know mechanic shop. VIP's daughter's getting married. Yeah. <laughs> I need the best. Broccoli Rob, you call Lorenzo. I need the best berries, you call Lorenzo. Why? Because my dad was tight with everybody in the market, and they would let him walk into the depths of their walking boxes at Andy Boy and at all these huge fruit and vegetable purveyors that they bring them in from South America and all over the world. I mean, Hunt Point Market's its own episode. Sure. And he'd be able to find, he'd, he'd dig through boxes of Broccoli Rob and find the ones with like the most florets on them. Yeah. And that's, so they knew my dad always delivered the best stuff. So he had this Ford Econoline van that just had plywood down on the floor. <laughs> that was, you know, and, and, and it was, it was a family vehicle, I believe, for a while. Um, and I remember being a little kid who we was driving up to, <laughs> I don't know if I should tell 
Yeah. <laughs> I was driving up to Wilton and I'm sitting on a box of like GPOD 100 potatoes in Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the best to sit on. Yeah. Because like it was, it was safe. It was potato. No, no, I'm just saying, no, no, it's safe. Safe. No, it was just like the most, it was the firmest, you know what I mean? Sure. And um, so, so uh, 201. New Jersey. I'm sorry. Who is that? 201. Who's 201? All right. Anyways. Don't matter. Forget 201. Forget 201. We're driving up the, up the Merit in this Ford Econoline van. Now that I think about it, this should have been commercial, most likely. <laughs> should have been on the Merit. No. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> this thing was big. This right. thing was big. Oh, I, oh God, I can still feel that steering wheel, dude. I can still feel it. Yeah. Oh. And, um, boom. <laughs> no, it's fine, but <laughs> we popped something, bro. We popped something. Right. Oh boy. Pull over. You know that side door in the van? You know, like the uh, the van have those big sliding side doors? Yep. I can still hear that door was like thunder to open that door. Boom! It opened up and there's my dad dragging a deer into the van. <laughs> You know, we're driving again. I'm on my box of potatoes. There's a dead deer next to me now. We get to, we get to Uncle Frank's house. He's, you know, first generation Italian, man. I mean, uh, off, off the boat Italian. I'm first generation. Off, you know, dude, they, they hung that thing up. They skinned it. And you better believe that that, that deer got turned into stew and... Bunch of things. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Thanks to my things. dad. A lot of things. So. Nose to tail. That'd be literally. We could go nose to tail. That's it. I we, still have that we pelt. Memory bed. I still have that <laughs> So that I never forget. So you and I were both <laughs> greatly influenced by a guy named Andy Forsheimer, as yeah. well as a ton of successful restaurant people uh, have gone through his school. Um, and along with Sasha, Sasha. but oh. I mean, we could do Sasha stories. We could do Andy stories. What is your favorite Andy or Sasha story? My favorite Sasha story is we were in in Barceloneta, in, Bar in Barcelona, we were in Barcelona. Barceloneta is on by the water. Barcelona, Barceloneta, Barceloneta. And it's like the water side. That's where that's where we stayed. That's where the W is. Oh, in, yeah, yeah. And, and, okay. yeah, that, yeah, that's that's Barcelona. Yeah. And you know, we were running around Spain with Sasha and just like he is just such an energy, right? He's like I look at this chandelier, that's Sasha. Right. Just like boom, like a fucking explosion of just fun, incredible energy. And I remember just laughing so hard with Sasha in a couple instances on the streets of Barcelona. One of them is we're walking down the street late at night, so you know, we're feeling giggly. And he stops. Christian. He points to a shoe on the floor by itself. And he goes, Christian, are you shoe? <laughs> I think I had said where we were going. Right. So it's like they say, are you sure? Are you sure? And that was one of my, we laughed for hours. And then another. He, he loved you. He oh loved God. you. Oh, it's my God. I worked for them probably. <laughs> yeah, tell them, tell them. Three years <laughs> before you even got to the fucking company. And they took you immediately to Spain. I was still like, am I ever going to go on this fucking trip? And you called me the A Rod of Barcelona. Yes, I did. I did. Christian came in, got the best salary in the company. All of a sudden, you know, everybody's been there for years. He's out. He's out. Paying, getting out paid by them. By <sighs> me and Andy in, in Chicago at Alinea. <laughs> oh yeah. Dinner. yeah. But and I would call Sa Sasha. Loved him and would you know every time. Hey Christian, Christian, what are you doing? And but I would call Sasha. 
I would call Zazu and be like, I, I was working for him for five years. And I call him. I have his cell phone number stored in my phone. Best worked Sasha for him for five years. Best Sasha impression. And I go, hey, so I call him about something. Lights or something. Because Sasha's the designer and the Barcelona genius restaurant oh, designer. Uh, no, I literally don't know anybody better. No. And we've tried. Um, but <clears throat> I call him. Hey, Sasha, what's going on? Hey, who's this? <laughs> and I, this happened countless times ago. Uh, it's John. Uh, I, I work in, in Greenwich. She's like, oh, hey, you're still there? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm, I'm still here, man. That was, <laughs> that was it. Well, you were there for like a couple years before me. Yeah, 100%. Uh, that but, was the best, man. That was a oh, fun man. restaurant. That was a very fun restaurant. Learned a lot. I didn't like any chefs prior to working with you. Like, all of them just rubbed me the wrong way. And I was an asshole back then. Not anymore. We were all young, like, you know, maniacs. They, we were young maniacs. Maniacs. Back then. 20, 26, 27 years old. Yeah. 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 I was like 25, 26 when I started there with you. And I met Andy. Um, I met Andy. I was working in White Plains at Paniche with Anthony Goncalves. There's another legend that I love. AG, shout out, Canopy and White Plains, pardon me. And we were cooking tapas, you know? And we knew about Barcelona, and the waiter comes into the kitchen one night, and he's like, hey, the only owner of Barcelona's here. He'd love to meet you. I'm like, Barcelona, I remember, I remember the, the murals. I remember, back then, it was mm-hmm. like, you'd see picture here and there in magazines, it wasn't an Instagram. So I remember, man, Barcelona's like, the coolest college man. I always wish my restaurants was like Barcelona. I wish Paniche did, even though Paniche was beautiful. Um, so I'm expecting like, you know, <laughs> this like dude that represents that, you and know, you get the, the owner. And the opposite of Zasha shows up. And then I walk over and there's this dude like, like this big, <laughs> and like that big. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, yeah. Like this big. Yeah. Now, even now I see him, I pat him on the head. We love it. We always laugh. In a brown suit. It's Andy Forzheimer, the most non-Barcelona, Barthaco looking person you'd ever right. think to see in your life. And that's when I, I, I met our mentor for the first time and lifelong confidant, consigliere, Second father, how many pickles did he help us, me, get out of? Sure. Whenever we needed him, how many people that worked for Barcelona that Andy would just still? To, yeah, Andy. Andy's a Saint Andy, Saint Andy. So um, he played the long game with me for years, years. He even invited me to the opening of Stanford, and I came up, and then he even dropped the bill on my table. <laughs> <laughs> That's not right. He comped a couple things. I'm like, dude, you invited me. I don't think I had a car. I remember you talked about that for a long time. The taxi or something from the Bronx to get there. And then, um, yeah, he just, I don't know, I don't know what the heck he saw in me, boy, but that guy, I love that guy. And to this day, um, he's always been there for me. He's been there for us. I would, there's nothing I wouldn't do for him. Literally, I'd, I'd, I'd run do a wall for that human being. Yeah, I think one of the things that we took away probably most from them, and most restaurant people don't pay attention to this, is vibe and the yeah. electricity of a dining room and how that can be cultivated, that can be like somewhat creative, whether it's your music or your staff or whatever. But they were really the first guys I had ever worked for that that was part, that was part of... You know, it's great service, great food. How's the vibe though? And it was like, if you had great food and great service, it just wasn't enough. And that was such a foreign idea back then. And we're talking, what are we talking? Like 11, 12 years ago. Dude, dude, Sasha had me at like a music studio in Soho with him like a hundred years ago in like, uh, like a studio where like people would record music but there was nobody there except for some sound engineers and we all had headphones on and they were just playing songs and we were the side, me and Sasha were deciding whether for them to put it on like the, that cat, that like um, yeah, that weird database. Yeah. That's how important right. vibe was. And it's the reason why 
Oh, maybe to a fault, I'm obsessed and we're obsessed with the lighting in the restaurant, the temperature in the restaurant, the music level in the restaurant, the type of music, the type of music at what time. We never just do on music. No. We had different playlists for different times. They were updated daily. Oh, I think we just took it and ran with it. I think we took that baseline and then, like you said, we sort of formulated it differently. And then which is the point where we're pretty much we're DJing and whatever that restaurant is. It was fun we, for us, too. Whatever our first restaurant was that we opened I up. I forget the name of it. I do, too. It's been so long. Um, but, Time flies. But we used to literally read the room and queue and practically DJ to a, a live dining room while working. I, my fondest memories at that place that I can't seem to remember the name was working in front of the pizza oven, right? And... I'd have two guys stretching and dressing pies and I would load them into the oven and I would cook, you know, four at a time and I'd have, you know, we had the laptop on the pass. Yep. I'd turn the laptop around and I would literally, you know, there'd be 300, 400 people in the restaurant, you know, between sitting and standing outside, music was outside. Gong show, 100%. Oh, the best. Um, um, catch that in a bottle, please. Um, cueing song, you know, I DJ when I was a kid, yeah, well, forever. So, reading a room, you know, I like to think that I expose you to that, right? Yeah, um, and you fucking took it to another level, but like to out cooking pizza in that wood oven that had no gas in it and cueing song by song to the room. And then dropping bombs like that's a more, or dropping a bomb like hands up. Remember hands up. Big bad wolf. Uh, big bad. Big bad wolf. <laughs> the big bad wolf. Yeah, but like when we played hands up, and yeah. there were three hundred people like give me your heart, give me. It's like, <laughs> dude, put that in, put that in a bottle for me. That's but that's what I keep going back to, and I'm not gonna take up too much of your time. But Seriously. that whole thing that you just did in your brain. Zach. Hey, uh, do me a favor, push back free play. <laughs> okay. But then but then push up creative thinking. Where do you want nap time? In nap time? Push everything after nap okay. time. Nap time okay. right after this. Okay, got it. But all that Can you, you text Carl the address to this place? Yeah. Don't Say it really loud for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so beep. all that stuff you just described and yeah. that captured in a bottle moment. I would like to see you open another restaurant. I would love to see you do something, even if it's just limited service, but a way to get that piece back. Is that, is that something that weighs heavily on you or is it something that you think you're just kind of past? No, it doesn't weigh heavily on me and I'm definitely not past it. It is something that I am using as my reward my pot of gold at the end of the rainbow or towards the end of the rainbow. When I'm at a place where the team that I'm currently building around me is strong enough, because everything I'm setting up is so that I can, everyone can, you know, there's a head of everything, right? Mm -hmm. Google Media is a few things, you know, there's, there's a, the restaurant consultation arm, there's a social media for restaurants, apparel, and um, 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 mm -hmm. fulfillment, mm -hmm. you know, and that's a whole big thing we're working on. There's a production company side of it. Uh, we're working on a show called uh, Cheat Day. It's like a cheat day with CP. We're working on the name, but essentially, like, me and Zach are trying to be super healthy right now. We're drinking tons of water. We're, we're having our meetings walking in the morning. And mm -hmm. so we're going to take one day a week to really go hard. I love that. Right? Like, really hard. So we line, we're gonna line up multiple restaurants and like you know in this shoot that we're doing coming up, we we end up landing at Neary's Bakery in in Port Chester, which is like a million square feet, and like I'm gonna like pull like hot bread like do the conveyor belts above you under you all that's like it's like crazy, and like I wanna like pull a warm loaf of bread off the conveyor belt and like whip out like a provolone out of my pocket and like you know like, you know and then they got their bakery and we'll go in the pastry thing so like. That's something that we're producing. And then I got my creative warehouse, uh, creative workspace. It's got a test kitchen in it that we're doing with Monogram. In there, I'll be able to do 
more of our digital media. Um, another show that's a dump and stir style talk show that we're working on. And just, you know, being creative, just trying to be creative again, you know. Um, Palooza is part of it, but, you know, Palooza falls under the events side of Gabagool Media, right? So we're looking for an events head. We're looking for a social media head. We're looking for an NFT and art curation head, which is most likely going to be Layer Cake, because it just doesn't know it yet. Right. Dope. Layer Cake. Alright guys. Um, no. No. Nah, Let's <laughs> do more. Let's do more. Um, <laughs> no. Thank you for coming. It was awesome. It was actually love a lot of fun. Love you, buddy. This was great. Uh, Stanford, Palooza. I love Stanford. The best. I love Stanford. You should move here and open a restaurant again. Uh, if Stanford wants me, I'll come. <laughs> Thank you, guys.